so for this Sarah funded grant, we're going to focus a little bit on post harvesting, but for the MUB grant, we're going to design a harvesting system, uh, you know, to bring fruit from the uh, tree to, to, uh, to the storage room. Okay, so for the post harvesting, after you take fruit, you know, from the farm, you need to, uh, you know, disseminate them, them. Uh, you also need to process them, like in, uh, remove some grains and uh, do uh, sanitation and raising, and then you uh, put in a bucket, you weigh them, put in a bucket. So this is a December. So that's, this guy is in this station is to do the uh, sanitation. Uh, and here is to do the raising. And then, you know, your fruit need to weigh uh, 25 pounds in the bucket, then seal it, put in the you know cool, cool room here uh, for future processing. Uh, so there's a little small video uh, showing by, I don't know you heard, maybe you cannot hear the voice. Not sure you can hear or not. No, we can't hear. Uh, you cannot hear. Don't know how to do it anyway. So, uh, so this is the December, you know. Uh, so the fruit that come in, they will be stem through this machine. Uh, this is designed by Terry Drum. Uh, then your fruit will catch by a, a small bucket, then go to this uh, sanitation station. So you can see there are three parts. One with the solution. Uh, of sanitization. This is uh, just uh, clean water to raise them. And then you drain the water, then put in a bucket with them 25 pounds season. That's what he's talking about here in the video is about the whole process. Okay, so what are we are missing here, right? We, uh, we have different version of distemmers. If you look here, in the left, left part is designed by Terry. In the right side, there is a December designed by uh, Elder Farms. So uh, they use a little bit different uh, method to remove the fruit. I hope I, you know, I, I will not uh, play the video because you, you probably cannot hear them. Anyway, so uh, there is a link you can go to see how it works. But generally, you know, if you look at this, it's just to shake them, you know, just distem the fruit from the branch, uh, from the stems. Uh, okay, I'll jump that. So again, we come back here. Uh, so I just want to see how this whole system is working. After distem the fruit, then you need to take to this uh, different station manually. And also, since there's chemical handled, you know, you may have uh, issues with health, uh, health of the human, and they need a lot of labor. And uh, especially when you weigh the fruits, you need to be careful, you know, you dip in one little bit by little, take a lot of time. So our work, our small project is trying to uh, you know, make automation system. So, so replace this a bunch of people. So that's what we are doing. That's a lot, a little bit uh, uh, animation I made. So you can see uh, this is from December. Those are fruit uh, go to different bucket. I just mimic, you know, this is a sanitation solution with the bucket. There's full of the solution. This is a clean water for uh, reason. Uh, the fruit, use the clean water. Then you, the water, uh, the fruit will, uh, you know, extract from here, go to this bucket. So here is a, 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 a skill. It can automatically matter it. It will dynamic real time showing the weight. And the weight reach to 25 pounds, it will shut off the, the system, auger or whatever system that's, you know, allow you to change it to a new bucket. So this is, a, then you print a label, it will include everything, like, you know, what time you process, and, uh, you know, where you process, who is the processor, uh, how many 
today for you as a wine farmer, how much you process today and what time. So this is a, you can put a label and you can put it on a bucket, then you can store it. So this is the whole system we want uh, to do. Uh, we did a little bit of different system. We tried uh, one is auger system. Again, this is work with Terry. Uh, so, and also we are currently trying a conveyor system. Both system have their bit of the, uh, pro and the cons. Uh, you know, so this is a little bit trying how we use this conveyor system. This is a small conveyor here. If you see underneath the destemmer, when the fruit drop to the conveyor, the conveyor will take the fruit to the first bucket with the solution, just mimic, you know, you don't need to take the bucket, you know, manually, not a fruit can move automatically. You know, ideally we'll have a second layer. So go to from this bucket to the second bucket and then go to the scale. But we only test late. Uh, again, you cannot hear the voice, but here is a video uh, showing how they move up. Uh, you know, it is 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 able to do that. We 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 facing some of the challenge, like you know, the berries always stick on this conveyor, and uh, you know the efficiency. We are trying to improve it. Uh, you know, in in the in this year, hope we can test in the field. Uh, so okay. So the second, I want Joe. Uh, take the lead, talk about the recent model we have developed to process use auger system. Okay, Joe. Hey, uh, everybody, can you hear me all right? Hello? I Sounds can like hear you. A... Yep, okay, yes, awesome. So yeah, uh, I'm Joe, I'm a, I'm a graduate student right now, and uh, I was an ag engineer, so I have kind of taken the lead on doing uh, some prototyping. And uh, I used to work with cottonseed, so I, I had managed and, and designed some screw conveyors before and have been working on how to convey the elderberry through a system where it can, can automate the cleaning process and put the chlorine solution on that's required to, to sterilize the surface before one freezes or stores the berries. And um, uh, I'm an extraction chemist now with, with some of my work and uh, elderberry has, has always intrigued me to some degree. Next slide, please. So this was the, the first draft of the solution. So uh, analogous to where the, the berries were dropping in from the conveyor would be our first container here. And that would be where you'd have the, the chlorine and the primary separation. So the, the elderberry is a very interesting fruit that in, in its ripe state is a, a health food. But in its unripe state, it's got some of those cyanic acids. So things like amygdalin that break down into cyanide in the body. So you don't want the system to convey through those unripe berries. They are conveniently uh, less dense than water. They float. A ripe berry will sink and an unripe berry that is poisonous will float. So the, the primary separation technique in the first tank, both to rinse off and clean off any unwanted debris that came through in the harvest, as well as the unripe berries, is a, a column of water. The, the unripe solution and, and everything you don't want sits at the top, and you can pull that off with a trash pump, and then everything you do want sinks down into the bottom. But you're going to need a way to convey from the bottom into the next tank while leaving that chlorine solution behind so you don't carry the chlorine all the way through. The way that this was devised was an air gap. Think like your, your basic plumbing system, how you have, have a gap of air in the, the U-tube that allows you to have water and trap the system so it's a, a, a conveyed system that, that works and you don't get all the, the gross smells, but you do are, get the, the ability to, to move everything through without the entire system being charged with water. So that's basically what we're doing. At, at the, the tank level, if you can see in one of those containers, the water is going to be at the level of, of that in the auger. As the auger conveys, the water pulls up a little bit, but not enough to, to move into the next tank. So you're able to leave the chlorinated 
cleaning solution behind in the first tank while moving the fruit through to the next one. Um, if 10% of the, the harvest stream is, is debris and, and unripe berries, you can pull from that and, and leave 90% of the, the stuff moving through as, as the ripe and desired stuff. A second containment vessel is then required to, to move the rest. So if it's again at 90% sufficient, you've now brought 99% of what you want through as, as opposed to having the 10% the waste here. So you're able through two separations to get down to just the ripe berries at the end and nothing else. Um, the control system is like he had mentioned, a, a shut off on that second auger. So it's attached to a scale, there's a scale in there and it'll send a kill signal to that auger when it reaches the right weight. And then you one can pull the bucket up, set it into the freezer after putting the, the right labeling on it, put another bucket on and hit start and it goes again. So berries can build up from the, the D stemmer in the first tank without ever having a problem there. They get conveyed through the system, they get washed, they get cleaned, they get sanitized and dry berries and no water gets put into the final container for freezing. Next slide, please. So here is this working. This is working with blueberries on the fact that they're fresh berries that have about the same uh, surface strength. So if the auger is going to, to mush a blueberry, it will mush an elderberry. I also, if you've ever seen um, the, the plastic BBs called Airsoft, those are about the right size as an elderberry. So testing was conducted with those as well in terms of making sure it moves the right size item. This is making sure it moves the right strength item and does not destroy the fruit. Um, next slide, please. So taking through, you through the design process a little bit, that the, the conveyor was what was tested last season and what everybody wanted to use. Um, in all due respect, the conveyor does not work. Um, the berries stick to the conveyor. The berries are, are not conveyed very well. The conveyor manufacturers adamantly said you can't stick that in, in a water solution and run it for at a steady state. But after, after talking with, with conveyor design engineers, they, they adamantly did not like throwing a conveyor controller and motor and driver in a, in a liquid solution. And that allowed me to turn to, to an auger-based system. That while it did effectively move fruit, it, it would not be something that one could, could rely on in harvest and in, in, in true conditions and in the field. So it, it was not a, a foreseeable solution in that sense. Next slide, please. So moved out to, to an auger and how to auger the fruit up. Um, originally had this as kind of a U-bend where we had piping bends that allowed you to, to move the fruit and to to move them up through the column. And it worked with BBs, but uh, again, there was a concern that it would cause too much pressure and you just rupture berries in the corner. So started to test and started to, to move that angle and sweep that. So instead of a, a 90 degree, you now have a 45 degree, and then you now have a, a system where the auger itself. So with a screw conveyor, you would love it to be flat. Screw conveyors work at, at a much higher load and you can, you can move a lot more material when they are flat, but your capacity factor suffers as that angle increases in steepness. But to combat the fact that moving a bunch of crushed fruit is not a useful endeavor, we ended up actually having to sweep the, the screw conveyor up at the end of this. So the testing did not satisfy that. Next slide, please. So, here, here's originally what, what, we, what we tested and designed and we're looking at of how to pull debris off, keep the air gap like we were talking about, move the fruit through. And while it was quite acceptable using a hardened injection molded plastic, it was not acceptable for fruit. So it, it did not satisfy the, the working conditions once we moved to testing fruit. So um, the, the cool part about this kind of system is you can monitor and you can keep the, the chlorine solution at a steady state. So as opposed to having to stop production to test the chlorine and refresh everything, with a trash pump pulling off of the side and, and a new clean like chlorine solution being dosed in, you can maintain a level of chlorine in the tank 
as you're pulling out the, the things you don't want. So as chlorine is consumed because it, it is used and it coats the fruit and, and it does the, the sanitization, you're able to refresh it at the proper rate so the system can be a, a more of a fire and forget as opposed to a, a batch production kind of system. Um, conveniently, all the other debris that you care about, all of the stems, all of the, the other grime that, that might be on a berry is also going to float for the most part as well. So you're, you're mid getting carried through that isn't ripe fruit. Next slide, please. So as we started to test, um, as, I, as I talked about a little bit, as you sweep a, a screw conveyor up, you lose a lot of capacity the higher that angle gets, but you protect the fruit from, from being destroyed due to, to pressure in the bottom or sharp edges and, and mitigating path length here. So as one produces a longer screw conveyor, if you, if you think about as a helix, so we've got a standard bit pitch on these. So for every linear like inch of travel, you've got the same kind of, of pitching on these augers. So you're, you're sweeping around a cylinder. So a, a foot long four inch auger, so a four inch diameter auger is going to have three complete revolutions per foot. And now you have a much longer path length than, than you'd even expect. And so the longer the path length, the more potential damage to fruit as, as it rolls along and, and collides with itself, with the walls, with the auger, with everything. Um, next slide, please. So this was, we, we saw the video of this running, but this was the first prototype uh, of being able to show that, that fruit was conveyable in both the right size and the right strength to, to move everything and, and we sized an auger appropriate for this. So uh, below is the, the basic calculations for screw conveyance that you've got the, the pitch, the diameter, the uh, capacity factor, you've got how uh, flowable the material is. So elderberries are reasonably free flowing compared to something like a, a dust particulate, which likes to compact or any of the, the surfactants that so I size screw conveyors for, for seed treatments a lot. And a lot of those um, powders liked to compact instead of flowing. And uh, elderberry is much more pleasant to work with, to be honest. That despite the fragility, it is, it is quite a pleasant thing. So we were able to safely run a, a low speed of about 50 RPMs and a high speed of about 115. And in doing so, even the four inch augers at 45 degrees with the right capacity factors could process up to 575, 580 kilograms per hour. A really well running team of five is potentially putting out about 250 kilograms an hour. That 500 pounds per hour from, from one of those teams is a good harvest team. So even at our, our low speeds, our system is matching basically the capacity and, and the running rate that they are and is doing so with much fewer operator input. That one guy hitting start and moving those buckets into the freezer could reasonably replicate what a team of five is doing. Next slide, please. We run out of time. <laughs> oh no. Two minutes. <laughs> so yeah, um, unfortunately, a lot of fruit damage occurred. That, that uh, some of the worst trials were 25% were of the fruit becoming damaged. I classified damaged as either bruised or ruptured skin. So um, a second prototype was necessary. Next slide, please. So I'm trying to, to mitigate that at the moment. So I'm reducing the, the distance it's traveling. I'm smoothing the auger out. I have a more gentle angle that still works. I have more of an open section and, and a, a bottom that funnels everything in. And I've increased the water level relative. So the air gap is much smaller. In doing so, I lose a little bit of operational um, throughput capacity, but hopefully mitigate fruit damage tremendously. So this is, this is my second iteration right now as we're going through. And it worked decently well with, with BBs. It's moving everything nicely. I have not tested it with, with raw um, ripe elderberry yet, just because that is currently not in season, but that's the next goal. That's the next objective through this. Next slide, please. Um, 
everything additionally can be uh, custom printed and custom fabricated that none of the loads we're dealing with that all of the all of the shear rates all, all of the mechanical strength required is well in the realm of what somebody could could fabricate by themselves on their kitchen table so parts are easy to replace and then to work with that we're not dealing with anything that requires significant machining next slide please um again we we interface so both terry and his system as well as uh, Dave Bueller with Elder Farms. They both have two systems. Uh, the River Hills one with Terry is an XY plane agitation destemming, where the entire thing shakes about and that knocks berries through the hole. And that will, will interface with what I've built, as will the, the rotary destemmer that uh, Dave and his team put together. So they, they both have pretty similar interfaces. Next slide, please. I guess this is the last slide. <laughs> Whew. Yeah, any questions? Thank All right, you. just for the people in the room here, there was one question in the chat about using different sanitizers in the system um, that was answered that the different farms are experimenting with that. So rather than using just the chlorine um, because organic producers can't use chlorine in the wash system. Does anybody here in the room have a question? Um, so the question was, do they use Sanidate? Um, the system they showed here was chlorine. So I don't know what the other growers are using. Honestly, you can dose any of the solutions. It doesn't matter what you put in it. Chlorine is just the, an, an industry standard for fruit like that. So you can throw hydrogen peroxide in just fine. That, that none of the None of the system would be damaged by using that as your cleaner instead of chlorine. It's not really any more caustic and it's not going to cause any problems on the mechanical end. 